Up next on Line TV, we have Going Virtual with Dakota Harris, Jacob Showy with your Pro Bowl highlights, and me, Emily Tyler, to see if we have a warming trend in your forecast. All that and more, Line TV starts now. Welcome back, Cersei. I hope you all had an amazing break. I'm Anna Calkins. And I'm Charity Sanders, and it's time for some of those announcements. Any student interested in trying out for varsity cheer or lion steppers for the upcoming 2022-2023 school year needs to go to the, either the West Office or the East Office and sign up before the mandatory parental meeting, which will be held Monday, February 28th at 5.30 p.m. in the main gym. ASUBB has online tutoring classes for the concurrent students, and any student who is enrolled in a concurrent class through ASUBB can contact the Advising and Learning Center with any questions. Any high school student who would like to run track this spring, you will need to go by and see the SHS indoor and see Coach Carroll to pick up a track packet. You will also need a current physical. Practice will only be held after school at the beginning February 17th at the Lions Stadium. In national news, Joe Rogan has put Spotify in a tough spot, but the streaming giant is not ready to part its way with the popular podcast host. Despite the intense criticism over the anti-coronavirus vaccine comment and use of racial slur, CEO Daniel Ek agrees that Joe said some hurtful things that deserve to be reprimanded, but he does not believe silencing Joe is the answer, since some people may still want to hear from him. President Joe Biden is sending about 2,000 U.S.-based troops to Poland and Germany and shifting 1,000 soldiers from Germany to Romania as demonstrations of America's commitments to allies on NATO's eastern flank and amid fears of Russian invasion of Ukraine. The Pentagon press secretary said that soon-to-deploy U.S. forces are intended to temporarily bolster the U.S. and, and allied defenses positions and will not enter Ukraine. About 350,000 homes and businesses lost power across the U.S. on Thursday as freezing rain and snow weighed down the tree limbs and encrusted power lines. Part of a winter storm that caused a deadly tornado in Alabama dumped more than a foot of snow in part of Midwest and brought rare measurable snowfall and hundreds of power outages across Texas. Storm condition conditions also caused headaches for travelers across the country country as airlines canceled more than 9,000 flights scheduled for Thursday or Friday in the U.S. It was quite chilly last week. I wonder if it'll be cold again this week. Let's throw it over to Emily to find out. Today's going to be sunny with a high of 64. Your rain's going to be at 6%. Winds are going west 9 miles per hour and your humidity is at 52%. Your sun rose at 6.59 a.m. on to tonight. Tonight we're going to have a low of 32. It's going to be cloudy with 4% chance of rain. Your winds are going northwest 5 miles per hour and your humidity is at 74%. Your sun will set at 5.43 p.m. On to the almanac. Your last seven days temperatures had a high of 67, a low of 20, and your monthly average of precipitation was 3.90 inches. Your month to date is 1.20 inches. On to the five day forecast. Thursday is going to be partly cloudy with 58 as your high, 32 as your low, and a 4% chance of rain. Friday, we're going to have a high of 65, a low of 40, and a 6% chance of rain. Saturday, it's going to be partly cloudy again with a 47 as your high, 21 as your low, and a 3% chance of rain. Sunday is going to be sunny with 49 as your high, 26 as your low, and a 2% chance of rain. And Monday, you're going to have a high of 53, a low of 28, and a 2% chance of rain. Looks like sunny skies from here on out. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks for those updates. Anna, did you think we were going to go virtual a few weeks ago? I wasn't sure, but Andrew has a story to tell us all about the threat of going virtual. Let's hear it. With the rise of the Omicron strain of COVID-19, many feared that Searcy Public Schools would shut down as it did two years ago. Others were excited for the opportunity to get out of school. Naturally, this spurred some debate among the student body and staff. With Omicron, I think they're not going to because it's supposedly so mild but I think with the flu or something 
Worse than Omicron, we could definitely shut down. I think they're really effective over breaks, especially since everyone goes on their vacation and comes back with COVID. So I think that would have been a good idea. There remains much debate over exactly how effective a school-wide shutdown would be. 64? 64 if you have the big blue book. I think the first one worked because people stayed home, because restaurants were closed, um, other social activities were closed. I think currently if we had a school shut down and restaurants were open and other places where people could socialize were open, I do not think it would be very effective to have a school shut down. I've asked some of my students like who said why are we not shutting school down and I, was, I said well are you going to stay home and not go to your friends houses and they said well no I'm going to go to my friends houses. So I think it would only be effective if people would actually stay home. One significant drawback to shutting down would be the effects of students being home more rather than in the classroom. Stapleton and he didn't want Watson to come with him right? He didn't want him to be the third wheel. I learned better here because I have food and animals and distracting things at home but I think since most things are on computer now, it could be pretty effective at home too. Like, it's harder to learn at home, but people should be able to do their work. They have plenty of time. A high schooler can stay home, but a, a five or six year old cannot stay home. So that creates a tremendous burden on parents. You have to think about everybody. Like when you make those kind of decisions, you have to think about everybody. Though the threat seems less problematic now, please be safe this school year. Back to you at the news desk. Well, at least we got a little break last week. I know, I was so happy. I'd also be happy to find out what's for lunch today. Chicken nuggies, chicken noodle soup, cheese pizza sticks, baked potatoes, seasoned green beans, grape tomatoes, cupcake, and milk. Delicious. Be sure to thank our lunch ladies for all the hard work that goes into preparing our lunches. I sure will. What's next on the agenda, Anna? Next up is some sports updates with the, the good old Jacob Showy. Let's hear it, Jacob. What's good, Circe High? Let's jump into these sports updates before going into this Wednesday morning. In local sports, the Circe boys and girls basketball team played the West Memphis Blue Devils yesterday here at the high school. We will have those results for Friday's show. We do have an update, however, due to the weather last week that Friday's game against Paragol Rams had been rescheduled to today, so cheer on the Lions as they hit the road this afternoon. The boys wrestling team had a state duel on Tuesday where they went up against Russellville. While we don't have details on who won the duel between the two schools, we do have some insight that both the boys and the girls will have their conference matchup here at the high school this Saturday. The Searcy Lions bowling team will have their state meet this Thursday as they go up to Lowell as they try to come back to Searcy with the, as state champions. Loritza Chena finished fifth out of 36 bowlers with a high game of 202 to make all conference. Congratulations to her on such a feat. In national sports, the NFL had their Pro Bowl game in Las Vegas this weekend where, they, where we saw great talents like Justin Herbert, Stephon Diggs, Kyler Murray, and so many more battle it out to see who was better between the AFC and NFC. This game wouldn't seem really close as what it was as the AFC would handily win the game 41-35 with Justin Herbert winning Offensive MVP with two touchdown passes while Max Crosby would win Defensive MVP with two sacks in the game. This game was definitely an exciting one as it is the last one before the Super Bowl this weekend. More news in the NFL this weekend as Saints running back Alvin Kamara was arrested in Las Vegas with battery charge Saturday night. While we don't have much details about what happened that night, we do know that for some strange reason he was still able to play the Pro Bowl the next day and this could be his last game we see him on the field for a while. The NHL will also have their All-Star game this week and as many exciting players around the league including Jordan Cairo of the St. Louis Blues, Rosmus Dahlin of the Buffalo Sabres, Jake Gunzel of the Pittsburgh Penguins, and Alex Petrangelo of the Vegas Golden Knights would all be there to compete. The Metropolitan Division would beat the Pacific in the finals 6-4 to take the, home the million dollar prize. The NHL's break will end tomorrow as the regular season will start back up. Well, Cersei, that's all the sports updates I have for you this Wednesday. I hope everyone has a terrific rest of their day. Now back to Charity and Anne at the news desk. Thanks for those updates, Jacob. Well, that wraps up this episode of Lion TV. Make sure to check out Celeste Avara's new article on, the Lion, on Lion Press about the truth behind teens depression. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Cersei High Lion TV. And to follow us on Twitter, at Lion TV, Instagram, Cersei Lion TV, and Facebook, Cersei High Lion TV. Signing off, I'm Anna Calkins. And I'm Charity Sanders. See you Friday, Cersei.